Hey everybody, this is Beck, and I'm a maker of music. And like the great Sun Ra said, space is the place. And I'm Farah, I work at NASA, and I use AI to explore Mars. And I brought a few friends along who know something about artificial intelligence. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Isabel. We are both artists working with NASA using artificial intelligence. This is... Ask NASA. Yeah, so Beck, you just released a set of new music videos uh, using a lot of NASA imagery and I grew up living space and obviously those images are used by scientists. What inspires you about space and how you came up with this idea? Well, the title of the record came from a video game, a really primitive video game from the 80s called Asteroids. When the asteroids were going to kill you and they would they were just about to collide with your spaceship that you would hit this button and it would make you disappear and reappear somewhere else in, in the galaxy. Uh, and I always wondered what that button was called and I looked it up one day and it was called hyperspace. So I, I sort of um, it got my mind thinking into music and song ideas. Because I think in some way I think of music as sort of a hyperspace button. You know, it's something that we, you know, we press play on a piece of music and it takes us somewhere out of our lives, out of our circumstances. But I did like the, the feeling of the music, uh, that there was this sort of thread of outer space, kind of um, wide vista of space and time, you know, existing in the songs. Artificial intelligence is the ability for machines or computers to make autonomous and intelligent decisions. Um, that can look like recognizing patterns or analyzing images or learning certain behaviors and then mimicking them. I mean, right away when we heard hyperspace, we thought we have to use AI for this. Beck was already creating a sonic environment that went to like the edges of our, our understanding and the way that we see. And that's something that we're most excited about working with AI with, that it, it, it expands our, our modes of thinking. And then just the title, hyperspace literally means to go beyond three dimensions. The one that we use for this particular project, it literally works in a 512 dimensional space. In order, the, the process begins with the AI training on the images. So if we showed it just a few hundred, it wouldn't know that much. But what was so great about working with NASA's decades deep you know, uh, archive of knowledge is that it could really learn. So for weeks and weeks, the AI trained on as many images as we could show it. I think in the end, it looked at over 25 million images. Um, sometimes that was multiple times looking at the same images to try and understand these images. Yeah, basically imagery of anything in our solar system is how we get started in the process of exploration, right? And right, so when we first went to Mars or when we sent Cassini to Saturn, we had some thoughts about what we might find based on that imagery and that's what allows us to um, really focus down on the type of science we're going to do. I worked a lot on the database creation and I feel almost like I could draw a picture of the galaxy now just from going, like anyone can do, just by working with the NASA websites and going through the archives. Like the AI was then able to take that and um, recognize uh, colors that were happening a lot, recognize shapes that were happening a lot. I remember when it first showed us what it thought Saturn looked like. I was blown away. Yeah, and even then seeing these images and getting all the info, it's, it's, it is overwhelming, isn't it? I mean, we're talking about other worlds, we're talking about other realities we probably won't ever get to experience in our lifetimes. This is, this is the closest we'll come to uh, touching the unknown. This project is so interesting because it, it really came out of the theme of the record. I would have loved the idea of taking sounds from these missions in space and, and putting them into the music itself. The coolest thing that we have coming up um, 
you know, which we can point you to when it comes out, is that Perseverance actually has two microphones on board, and it's the first time we'll have real audio from Mars. So we'll have audio as well landing on the planet, so that during entry, descent, and landing, and then we'll have audio when we're driving, or um, the rover has a laser, and so you'll be able to actually hear that laser zap on another planet, which is kind of something that's kind of hard to even wrap your mind around. And that hasn't been recorded before? No, nope, not with a microphone, not this way. Uh, we've never had a microphone on the rover like that. Okay, well, send those audio files my way when you get them. Absolutely. So on Perseverance, we actually have an extra computer. And so that extra computer allows us to make the rover smarter. And we actually self-drive on Mars. So the rover has to take imagery of the area in front of it, literally build its own map. It can then identify different types of obstacles and slopes. And based on that and its knowledge of where it's able to drive, it decides on the path. The Mars database was in one of the easiest ones because it's where we have the most high resolution imagery. It's been so well captured from so many different points of view. We've seen the soil on a terrestrial level, and then we also have imaging of Mars from, from above. And looking through this, this data set of massive data set of incredible images, once we trained the AI on that, it was able to kind of produce such vivid, strange imagery because Mars itself, I think, is so much more complex and so much more um, deep and varied than we imagine it is. Okay, so one more cool feature about the Perseverance rover is that it can also act as a scientist. The rover can look at the environment around it, look at all the rocks and say, hey, this rock over there looks really cool. Let me image it, use my laser to zap it and figure out what's under that surface, send all of that data back to the scientists. Uh, so it allows us to essentially have scientists on Mars making decisions without having humans in the loop here on the ground. I think to me, the idea of space is a bit overwhelming and awe-inspiring. Just the idea of listening to a piece of music and we go somewhere else, our lives change. You know, it's a mirror to this other idea of space and space exploration and letting the, the imagery of these other worlds, these unknown places with this music, I think um, has been really satisfying to me. It's In the I feel uh, really fortunate to to have you all open your doors to, to me and my music and for us to go somewhere with it. That was unexpected, even for me. Let's see make space or something. Here, let me get my uh, video up. <laughs> all right, you guys. We'll get it, we'll get there. We'll get there. Get there. NASA. This is Ask NASA. I mean, that would be the show tune way. There's all kinds of guitars. Um, this guitar is actually from 1901 and it has these ivory pegs. All right, so these are some vintage keyboards. And this is the 808, which is responsible for the sound of all trap music. This is the Moog. And uh, this is responsible for most of the music of the 80s. There's a couple of pedals that I use little bits and bobs. For more episodes of Ask NASA, click the playlist.